you know, every year we prepare for the State of the Union Address, we try to get a couple of sentences in, we try to get something about what we're interested in, the domestic policy council, you know, get it in front of the president. Every year the president has talked about education, and almost every year he's talked about STEM in some way. Um, this year the, the State of the Union Address was about the importance of the middle class, making America a magnet for jobs, making sure that Americans are, are trained and skilled for those jobs. Um, and this year the president had a couple of big policy things that he mentioned. One was uh, pre-K for all, right? expanding preschool, the, the importance of that, of making sure that students are ready when they actually start going to school, um, that they're not starting behind. Um, and he talks again this year about teachers, and one of the things that was mentioned was about the idea of having a, a, a STEM master teacher corps. That is, there are lots of great teachers out there. Uh, what can we do to think about how to recognize and tap their expertise to figure out how to learn from those great teachers in terms of, of uh, policies about teaching? Um, and why does the president talk so much about STEM? Uh, part of it is this, you know, there, there, there's a big jobs focus, and we realize that as we think about the American economy as it moves into the future, a tremendous amount of those jobs are either in STEM or require skills that are STEM related, specifically mathematics and you know, critical thinking skills. Um, we talk a lot about the, there's a tremendous misalignment between uh, skills and labor market needs and the educational preparedness of workers in America. Right? This is a huge problem for America. We know that STEM occupations are pro projected to grow faster than others. We know that uh, people who are in STEM fields are less likely to be unemployed. They're more likely to make uh, higher wages than others. Um, and we know that one of the real challenges that we face in STEM is something that, uh, that Lon mentioned, is this issue of traditionally STEM fields have not been particularly diverse. We haven't done a particularly good job historically of bringing in uh, underrepresented groups. You know, we actually talk about historically underrepresented groups in STEM. And when we add up all of those historically underrepresented groups, it's women and girls, it's Hispanics, it's blacks, it's 70% of the population. Right? The majority of America is underrepresented in these very important fields. Right? That's, a, that's an issue we really have to solve. Two reasons why we have to solve it. One is that as America is competing, as our, in the future, as we're impeding, competing in a global marketplace, we have to be able to tap the diversity of the country, everybody's good ideas, as a tremendous asset. Right? People's backgrounds, how people think about things and designing and engineering and discovering things is based to some extent upon their backgrounds, what they bring to it. People of diverse backgrounds bring really different things. So it's the right thing to do for the American economy. It's also the right thing to do you know, from an equity viewpoint, but also for individuals, as I mentioned before. People in STEM jobs or people with STEM degrees tend to earn more. They tend to be employed at higher rates. There's a wage premium for people who have STEM degrees, and those wage premiums are actually greater for women and greater for traditionally underrepresented groups. So we have to figure out how to solve that problem.